What's up, everybody? It's the Common Sense Investor coming at you with another video. In this video, whoo, I got a good one for you people. This is where we're going to be talking about objection number three, where I try to stop the reverse stock split and the conversion, and possible RICO violations are involved here. But before we get started, let me just run it for people that are new and haven't watched the other videos. I put uh, together something called links to all the pages. It's my documents that I am mailing to the courts in the next day or two, all right, because I'm tightening things up, and I got to go have a procedure done, so things are fixing to slow down for me for just a day or two, okay, but I wanted to get these videos done. You come on down here. You see the table of contents. That's the statement of objections, the complete version. It's all of them put together. These are the individual objections that I have. This is the second part, the new proposed settlement that I am proposing, and I give a brief in support of it, which is my argument, and then I tell the court what they are. You come on down here. There it is right there. You click on it. It's going to ask you to sign in and maybe get uh, my approval. You have to wait till I approve it, and then you'll be able to enter the docket, uh, document. If you want to see them all, just go through them, click them all. Ask to be approved, I'll approve them. But don't click the same link five times. I get five different emails whenever that happens from you every time you click it. So just click each one once, ask for permission. You can click uh, objections, number one letter, read it. There's the chat GPT prompt. Second one there is the defendants of rights to immunity. Just click it, ask for permission. I'll get to you. I'll be on my couch laid out for two days that I can't move. So I'll have plenty of time to, to accept y'all. But let's talk about objection number three. Objection number three is objecting to lifting the status quo and possible civil RICO violations. This objection strongly opposes the approval and implementation of the charter proposals, alleging potential civil RICO Act violations and violations of Delaware law. The objection argues that the plaintiffs have accused the defendants and Antara of engaging in a conspiracy to circumvent shareholder wishes and states that such violations should not be ignored. The objection requests the court to invalidate the implementation of the charter proposals, maintains the status quo until the ruling on the vote's legality and consider the alleged violations. If you use ChatGPT, then follow the video posted here, that's this video, and you'll do this. All right, let's talk about your ChatGPT prompt. You're going to start it off a little bit different. You just copy it and go paste it in ChatGPT. Don't hit the return button yet. You have to post in, uh, paste in your objection to uh, lifting the status quo, okay? But here's your ChatGPT prompt broke down. You're telling ChatGPT, you are a Harvard Law professor. And I am your student. And I have come to you for help writing this objection letter to the court. Please write it in simple terms. A company I own stock in is being sued. I am writing a letter to the judge in this matter. I read someone else's objection letter and liked it, and I would like to put it in my letter also. Please rephrase and make 100% original. Keep the context of the objection. All right. Now, you're telling ChatGPT who, who it's going to be. All right. You are a Harvard Law School professor. You are a sixth grade English teacher. You are a class A pipe fitter for whatever company. Whatever you want ChatGPT to be, you start it off with, you are this. And then you tell it to whatever it's going to give you, give it to you in simple terms. Because if you, like in this case, when I said Harvard Law Professor, it answered me in the language of a Harvard Law Professor. So I said, well, break it down for me in simple terms. And it does. And I use it in the objection. All right? Please rephrase. Don't say rewrite. Because if you don't, if you say rewrite, it rewrites the whole thing. And you don't want that. You just want it rephrased to make it your own letter. But let's take a look at the letter, people. Now, I'm not going to read the whole thing. You can click on the link, ask for approval, and I'll approve it. You can come on in here and read it yourself. Before you uh, submit it as your argument, you need to make sure you agree with it. 
But I'm going to scroll right down here and I'm going to say, if the allegations are true, they may potentially imply violations to RICO Act. All right. According to Delaware law, significant corporate decisions such as the charter proposals require at least a majority vote of the company's outstanding shares will be required for stockholder approval of the charter amendments. All right, that is Delaware Law, Section 216.4. Somebody sent that to me in the chat. I researched it. I asked ChatGPT. I went and got the uh, actual law and read it, and it was correct. So that violates uh, Section 216.4 right there. Then the next paragraph, any action such as selling controlling interests of the company to an institution, thus circumventing shareholder desires, is considered a violation of the New York Stock Exchange listed manuals for companies, section 312.03C1. And it tells you right there where they can go find that. But you cannot sell controlling interests of a company's uh, and you're going to see it in just a second. You can't sell control and interest of a company without shareholder approval. And I'm going to argue that in just a second. Watch. Under Delaware law also, substantial corporate resolutions to include corporate amendments demand approval from at least a majority of the company's outstanding shares. And decisions of shareholders should not be infringed upon by outside influences. That's Delaware Supreme Court. And that's the case. Now, watch this. Let me see. Let me get on down here. Oh, they only had 36%. They didn't reach the, the mandatory majority of it. So they only got 36%. And it went further than that. Uh, if defendants set out to concoct a scheme to circumvent shareholders' denial of the proposals in question, they succeeded because out of AMC's own mouth, they said, without the mirrored voting and Antara's transactions, the proposals would not have passed. All right, that's number five. AMC 00049559. All right, this is part of the concealed documents that they didn't want to give us access to. Listen to this. The court will see on February 23rd, 2023, Defendant Goodman received an electronic notification from Eddie Gladbach stating that of the 929.8 million APE shares, there were only 26% shareholders who had voted yes to the proposals. All right, and then that was in 49565. So only 26% had voted yes. Then the next day, February 24, 2023, Defendant Goodman received another electronic notification from Eddie Gladbach stating, you will notice there was a large jump in eight votes today. That is because Antara has voted their shares held at computer share. Privilege redacted after that. Before the, I put that in there too, so if the judge sees it, she'll get mad. But the Antara votes were added. Before the Antara votes were added, Ape only had 26% chance of succeeding. But with Antara's votes now cast for the charter proposals, Ape now stood at 47% approval. And it appears their overall efforts to circumvent shareholder wishes failed once again. Even with the Antara deal, they didn't pull it off. Violation of the New York Stock Exchange listed manual. This is good. As seen above, the Antara transaction was a, mirror, a major influence in the corporate election. Even though the measure failed to meet the majority standard, they were a majority influence nonetheless. However, they should not have been voting at all. The New York Stock Exchange listed manual states, shareholder approval is required prior to the issuance of securities convertible into ex exercisable for common stock in any transaction or series of related transactions if the common stock has or will upon issuance voting power equal to or excess of 20% of the voting power outstanding. Let me tell you what that means. That means before they could 
enter into the Antara deal, they needed eight shareholder approval because they sold over 20% of the share voting power to Antara. So that would have needed an ape approval first. Records reflect that at the time AMC had furnished their at the money's transactions, Antara had 27% voting power of ape shares outstanding. This is a clear violation of section 312.03C1 of the New York Stock Exchange Listed Companies Manual. While it is true, this is good now, make, make your enemy agree with you, while it's true the defendants may have had the right to create ape, but they did not have the authority to enter into the Antara transaction without prior approval of the ape shareholders because the transaction exceeded 20% of their voting power. And this policy was put in place to hinder the exact type of takeover from bona fide shareholders. So that ends that. Uh, now, what's the purpose of this is you're going to see it in when I get to my arguments for my new proposal. I'll argue this one again. Now, if you agree with these arguments that I just gave you in this letter, then you just simply copy this, go put it over there in ChatGPT with that prompt that I showed you right here. Put your prompt first, then put your paste in your letter, hit return, and ChatGPT will write the letter for you. And with that, let's talk to you in the next video. We're going to be talking about the attorney fees. And boy, do I put it on their ass. I know you're going to agree with me on those. Love you. Be blessed. See you in the next video.